In this video, I will discuss several stories relating to science and technology. If you do happen to enjoy this video, please consider tapping the like button and subscribing for more videos like this. All right, well, are you ready to get into the stories today? First story for today, does your Roomba have a personality? Scientists program robot vacuums with personalities from Snow White's dwarves. Oh, I want to see a Roomba that has the personality of Grumpy. The yeah. Grumpy robot avoided people while using erratic motions and a range of velocities. So I actually don't know how they did this. Because um, you'd think you can't program a personality or like why is it interesting how it re will react if you programmed it to avoid humans because that's what a shy Roomba would do then why would you be surprised when it avoids humans I wonder how they got their like like how they researched this <laughs> they watched they watched what? a Disney movie and then realized that they even though they're working from home they still need to do something <laughs> I don't know, man. Someone from psychology today said, I got I got an idea. I got an idea for you. We're all going to stare at our Roombas, watch a Disney movie, and meet back here in a week. Well, maybe in the future we can replace pets with robots uh, or Roombas. You know? So, like... No. Because your pet can't do chores, but... A Roomba with a personality can, you know, be your best friend. And can I your floor. Kill, a mice, kill a mouse and leave it on your bed? On your, <laughs> on your bed? Uh, I don't think your Roomba can replace my cat, Roberto. Okay, so next story. Germ zapping robots might be uh, how Hollywood might kill coronavirus fears on set. Look at that thing. It kind of reminds me of like one of the Daleks from like uh Yeah, it, it definitely is. It's a Dalek. It looks kind of like, uh, like a robot trash can. Like the, the head shape as well. It is our past and our future. <laughs> I think that they could have done something with this um, to uh, make it a little bit funnier. The uh, alternate title for that should be this. The Xenex's robots, which can be rented on a per month basis oh, or purchased for roughly $125 thousand dollars how does it like zap germs uh so actually this is a technology i'm fairly familiar with if you use uv light uh so the robot uses pulses of ultraviolet light to kill so, sars covid is it just a like a is it just a big ultraviolet light bulb on wheels <sighs> you know what now that i think about it that could be exactly what it is that's but it'd be like funnier if it looked like this and it just shoots, you know. Little ultraviolet laser beams. Yeah. I've been curious about this and I want to experiment with it. The only problem with uh, experimenting with UV light is it kills people too. Just I mean, more slowly. Only if you use it incorrectly. Alright. We have a few more stories here. A little bit more of a lighter story. Elon Musk and Grimes have changed their baby's name a bit. <laughs> are you aware- I did change the baby's name a bit. Are you aware of the uh, Elon Musk baby name story? Oh yeah, Kyle. Well, <laughs> maybe it's Zaya12. XAA12. Earlier this month, Tesla and SpaceX CEO Musk announced the birth of his baby boy in a post on Twitter, revealing his son was called <laughs> Musk. <laughs> However, speculation arose. Yeah, so basically, you can't put 12 and hyphen and whatever that is. <laughs> you can't write that on a birth certificate because they're ancient computers don't have those on them. My computer doesn't have that key on it, as far as I'm concerned. I can't type that. I don't see one on my computer. So actually, I guess hyphens are okay, because there are names with hyphens, but I definitely, yeah. Um, well, I guess I've seen people like the third in their name. This is just- The 12th? 12. <laughs> the 12th. Okay, so obviously this name does have a meaning. 
You know, Grimes broke down the significance of each letter, but uh, the X stands for the unknown variable, the AE for my elven spelling of AI, and the A12 is her favorite or their favorite aircraft. Do you have a favorite aircraft? Uh, JJ the airplane. Mine is um the Lockheed 117 Nighthawk is my favorite. We'll compare mine to yours. <laughs> that's that's my favorite uh aircraft. That's such a cool name, but Nighthawk. I guess this is also a cool name. I, it's just a lot more difficult to pronounce because. It's like they made their own word. It's not like they made their own word, it's like they made their own language. Yes, remember she um referenced elven. Elven? Yeah. <laughs> they may be elves. So back to the story. They the original name was <laughs> Musk. And um they had to change it to this. What's all that different? They use Roman numerals because it looks better, TBH. <laughs> <laughs> I'm... Okay. Rwanda's anti-epidemic robots. Where they, are they? They have all the for. That's a good point. Where's the fifth one? Um... <laughs> it's escaped. Escaped <laughs> <laughs> the labs. Okay, so the robots perform a number of tasks relating to managing coronavirus. They can screen up to 150 people every minute for symptoms of the virus, such as high temperature and dry cough. Now that is uh, some completely revolutionary stuff right there. Uh... This makes no sense. I mean, were they not able to predict that the weather was going to do this? Or... <laughs> we hired everyone, you've done all the research, you've planned out the course, but you forgot to check what the weather is going to be like that day. Just Google weather. So, as you can see, these are my homies. Uh, I know that guy from the training center that I totally went to when I was getting ready to... Uh, blast off. Well, SpaceX has never taken people to space before, and uh, the its crew dragon is a gumshot, gundrop shaped capsule, an upgraded version of SpaceX original dragon capsule. Wow. It's been used mainly to carry cargo, but not people to the space station. <laughs> Only four seats for NASA missions. No, they're, somebody's gonna have to sit on somebody else. Because if you think about it, yeah, there's four seats. If every person sits down, and then every person sits on someone else's lap, then you can easily fit eight people with just four seats. I gotta give them credit though, because that's efficient, right? It's saving space and it's saving weight. So having less seats and having less space in the aircraft and just thinking outside the box like that, it's revolutionary. You know, when I'm leaving the uh, stratosphere, I will I would feel very comfortable, subway style. Alright, well this is the end of uh, Tech Talk for this week. Come back next week for more stories on interesting science and technology related topics. Uh, if you could, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button so that I can keep making videos and that uh, maybe I can actually afford a real SpaceX helmet.